Now let's talk about few common CVs or few different products which are vulnerable to this buffer overflow. One of the generally or you can say most commonly and widely used products is the Windows operating system. Now Windows operating system has their own applications and they have their own services as well. Right now in buffer overflow we usually flood the buffer and tries to control the instruction pointer that's what usually happen and that can same be done in different application which accepts the input and the same goes for their services as well now in windows there are multiple cvs which are reported and they are reported for the buffer of for their different services and application but one of the most common cv is cve 2017-0144 which is also known as MS17010. Here the MS stands for Microsoft. They also use their own counting and representations as well but CV is the common representation that we usually refer. This CV 2017-0144 or MS17010 is known as Eternal Blue. This is not directly reported by someone from the public. It was released by a leak. In 2017, there was a hacker group called Shadow Brokers. In the past, they usually works with the NSA, which is again a US organization. And while working with the NSA, they identify a few different things, which they again leak in the later days in 2017. In their leak, which is again known as Vault 7, the leak was known as Vault 7 release or Vault 7 leaks. In their leak, they have released this CVE. Not exactly they reveal this CV, but they release the exploit just available to take advantage of this vulnerability. This vulnerability is present in the SMB, which is again server message block. A particular service which is available in Windows operating system and the version 1 the first version of this SMB this SMB service is used for multiple things like one for the inter-process communication just to communicate between different processes on different machines in different or in the same network if they are connected they can communicate with their different processes second thing is the file sharing they can share files in the network through this SMB service. And the third part is the resource sharing. They can share resource with other users in the network. If you want to know more about this SMB or want to check a list of buffer overflow, like with different products, with different application, has this buffer overflow vulnerability, what are their versions and what are their current secure versions as well. You can give a simple search on exploit db kind of platform or on the nvd like for example if we search on exploit db and search here for buffer overflow only like we can see they have 249 entries specifically for buffer overflow for different applications for different services on the other hand if we search in the nvd.nist.gov for buffer overflow we can see we have a total of 15,432 entries only for this buffer overflow, right? It will again contain different application. It will also contain some different operating systems like Linux, Windows and few others like Android and other operating systems as well. It could be the buffer overflow vulnerability for a network service, for any OS service, for any product, it could be for anything. But there are 15,432 registered CVs for this buffer overflow for different softwares and everything else. If you want to dig more about this CV, which is reported for this SMB service version one, you can see it is reported for different versions of Windows, including Vista, Server, Windows 7, 8, and Windows 10, and other server versions as well. If you want to get a complete list of different versions which are vulnerable to this CV, you can just scroll down and get the whole list here. Under the known affected software configuration part, you can get Windows 10, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows Vista and other products as well here. Now, 
This is not the case that only older version of SMB or older version of services are vulnerable to these kind of buffer overflow or any other vulnerabilities. If we talk about this particular CV, which is 2020-0796, this is again reported for the latest version of SMB, which is version 3. So new versions of services can also be vulnerable to different remote code execution. Simple. Other than this, if you want to read more about this on the Microsoft platform, you just have to search it for this MS17010, which will take you to the whole documentation which you can read. Other than this, if you want to try your hands on this particular vulnerability, like how it is exploitable, then you can just register on TryHackMe kind of platform where you can simply search for Eternal Blue, which will give you a list of different rooms available here. And if you go with the first one with this blue, you can directly start your vulnerable machine here. For example, if I start my vulnerable machine, then to connect with the machine, I will get my IP address here, which will be shown in just a minute. And to connect with this, I can use the VPN networks. So let's say currently I'm inside this Kali Linux. And if I go to this downloads folder, I can see there is a open VPN file. You can name it anything that you like. And just to connect with that machine within that network, you just go with the simple command sudo and then open VPN and your configuration file. This configuration file has simple like IP and the user credential kind of thing, which OpenVPN will use to connect to the specific network, wherever vulnerable machine is present. But I would recommend only perform this kind of operation in a secure VM environment. So let's connect. And on the other end, other than this connection, if you want, you can also use this attack box as well, where you will get your machine directly in your browser here. So for let's say I'm using this one here. So let's start the attack box. But we get the error that we cannot do it for more than one hour for a non subscribed user. But if you want, you can directly connect it with this machine here. So for that again, we need the subscription. But if you don't want to give a subscription, then all you have to do is just use their VPN service. For that, just go to access machine options. And under this section, go to OpenVPN. And from here, you can download your OpenVPN configuration file. Then you will also get the commands for different Mac, Linux, and Windows operating systems, like how you can configure it. And we still we are using Linux because Kali is a Linux distribution. So we can connect it with this simple commands here, which we have just performed here. Now, we can see we get our IP address here. But before exploiting any vulnerability for any product or any application, you can say, first we have to know more about that particular service or the product. So just to get more detail about that particular SMB service, let's just search for simple, what is the SMB port? So here you can see the port used for the SMB service is port number 445. And the common tool that we usually use to take advantage of those vulnerabilities is the MSF. So let's just go and connect with the Kali machine, which I'm using in the virtual environment here. So let's open it and I'm going to use my main machine terminal here. So let's go with SSH Kali done. And now let's connect with MSF DB run but we have to execute it with the sudo command. So let's do it as well. Inside this MSF, we will search for different exploits, auxiliaries, payloads available for this SMB service. But before that, first we have to identify that the machine we have here is actually running that particular SMB service or not. And to identify that, we have to perform a network scan on that particular machine. Just to be quick on network scan, we can use N2, which is called as Nmap, and we just have to pass the IP address here. So if we just pass the IP address, it will scan a whole bunch of different open ports on that particular machine. But we are only focused on port 445. So we use a flag as minus P just to specify that only scan for this single port here. So it will only scan this single port. And if we hit enter, 
we will see that this particular port this particular service is unable and we can connect on this service here and if you want you can go with their questionnaire as well which is available on TriHackMe platform so you can see we have to scan the machine we have completed this now it says how many open ports are there but for that we have to scan all the thousand ports you can say but i don't want to do it because it will consume some time so instead of doing that i will simply skip all those questions but if you want you can perform these questions simple now instead of that we got the port we are inside this msf all we have to do is we will simply search here for a type let's say i'm looking for the exploit so type would be exploit and i'm looking for eternal blue which is again the code name or the nickname for our vulnerability now here you can see this particular exploit has a target for windows 7 windows 8 windows 8.1 windows server 2012 and windows 10 pro and enterprise evaluation as well so to use this all we have to do is just go with the use command go with the index as zero and hit enter it says no payload configured so defaulting to windows x64 metropolitan reverse tcp but no issues we can just check options here so let's hit options and here you can see we have to configure the par host which is required but the current value is empty so let's just go with our host and go with the upper case because in some cases if you pass the lower case value you may not update the variable here so hosts and then the ip address let's do it for l host as well because if we keep listening on this local ip we may not get connection here for example if you want to try let's execute the payload and let's see we will get a connection here or not and here you can see we scan some payloads the target is vulnerable we check some other values smv replies we dump some data and we are sending all but last fragment of exploit packet but as we are listening on this local port we may not get the connection directly here and as we can't wait for all day so i'll simply cancel this and set l host to the ip that i have for that what i'll do is i'll simply pass a command ip space a to get my ip for this particular vpn network or the internal network and the ip is 10171001146 and so let's configure it l host and the ip address now if you execute the run command you may get the connection and you may not get the connections as well it depends on your incoming packet if your firewall block the incoming connections you will not receive the connection out there but let's give it a try if you not get the connection here you can do one more thing you can directly go to this attack box and then you can use the same process there it will always work in some cases you may not get connection on your local machine but you will get connection on these machines more often as compared to these local machines so it's on you if you know that you are doing all the steps right and even then you don't have the connection then i would recommend testing them on this attack box instead of that but right now we have consumed all the subscription available to me for a free user and we cannot access more of it so let's just close this and let's give it a try that we get a connection or not so let's give it a hit let's run again it does the same thing scan windows it's vulnerable that we are connected with windows 7 professional with service pack 1 and the version is 7601 and still we are waiting for the connection now as i told you we cannot get the connection if not we can do one more thing so in that case i have to configure one more account so let's do that quickly for that i'll go to this cry hack me let's just terminate the machine first 
terminate it and then I'll be back with the new account here. Now we are again in this try me machine. Now let's go to dashboard and again search here and search here for blue. And we can see we get the entry. All we have to do is just join the room first. Now start the machine and let's start the attack box as well. So here you can see we will get our machine here in just 120 seconds. It takes a little time but again soon we will get the machine available to us. All we will do we will perform the same steps that we performed here. We will simply scan the machine with the end map that the port is open or not. After scanning we will simply search for the exploits available for this eternal blue. The code name or if you want you can search with the CVE or this MS17010 as well. Both will work. Then just simply configure the payload and execute it. But before that we have to wait for a few seconds to get the machine ready for us. And now the machine is ready so let's start working with the machine. Let's open the terminal and let's perform the same steps here. Let's open it, maximize it and let's start working with this IP address. This is our target address. So let's perform the nmap scan first. nmap 101085.95. We are only focused on the port 445. And we can see this is vulnerable. Not exactly vulnerable, but the port is open here. And to get the vulnerability status, we can just go with the sudo. We don't need sudo because we are already the root user here. You can see, just go with msf console just to start the console if you want to start the db you can just go with msf db and run command there as we get the msf console ready here all we have to do is we just simply search here so we search for exploit oops the type would be exploit so type exploit and then search here for blue or eternal blue whatever you want to search for we get multiple entries for blue so let's search here for eternal blue we get three entries and one of them is ms17010 let's use the first entry at zero the default payload is again same windows 64 metropolitan reverse tcp we are good with the payload let's go with the option and let's configure the power host here you can see the L host is by default 10.10.126.183 which is our own IP address. So let's configure the R host. Set R host which is again 10.10.85.95 which you can verify as your target machine here. Now let's complete this and let's execute the payload in the machine. And as soon as we execute the payload or it get executed on the victim side, we will get the connection here. So all we have to do is just wait for a few seconds and we will get the connection. If you see this win statement here, it means we get the connection or if you see this metaprator here, we get the connection. But why I'm talking about this win statement is because if the payload that you have used is the reverse shell, you may not get this metaprator or you may not get anything here as inside instead of matter operator that is called as the blind shell but you can verify it with this win or the fail statement here now as we are inside this matter operator we can just do whatever operation we want we can just take help from this help command and we can perform any operation that we want so this is what a simple vulnerability can perform so we can simply take advantage of any remote machine available in the network or available to the public as well so all you have to do is just send some malicious packet and we are inside the machine simple as that